One night, a million tomorrows. The future of millions can be affected by what happens this one night. Thank you for attending the 2009 Dinner of Champions, a benefit for the Eastern North Carolina chapter of the National Multiple Sclerosis Society. As we celebrate the positive impact advances in the health and life sciences are making in the lives of millions, we want you to meet some of the people who live daily with the challenges of multiple sclerosis. My name is Terry Brown and I have MS. My name is Mary Ann Lee and I was diagnosed with MS in 1991. My name is Elizabeth Page and I was diagnosed with MS 14 years ago. My name is Ashley Koontz and in 2003 when I was 13 I was diagnosed with MS. My name is Danielle Steins and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1994. My name is Brian Cole. I was diagnosed with MS in 1995. At the time, I was living in Savannah, Georgia, working full time. I was a 28-year-old mother with two small children. I had a two-year-old and a newborn. My wife and I were celebrating our 30th anniversary with a dream vacation in Maui. And I was playing golf at Kanapali Beach. And the one thing that I noticed was every hole, when we finished putting on the green and went back to the golf cart, I was the last one back. I was having trouble with balance. I was falling. I began experiencing numbness throughout my left arm. I started to feel, um, <clears throat> it was almost like a, a weakness where my left side would drop. And it took about nine months to get a diagnosis. I was diagnosed with primary progressive MS. No treatment, no cure. I had no idea what multiple sclerosis was. I didn't want to know anything about MS, I just wanted to ignore it, I was in complete denial about my entire situation. I think the hardest thing about having MS is not knowing. My neurologist said, you're gonna go from a cane to a walker to a wheelchair. Not exactly what you wanna hear. That made a huge impression on me because at that point I hadn't realized I had a disease that there is no cure for. I've just continued in a downward slow progression. Uh, today I use a walker. Nobody else can really see what's going on and yet you're having to make all kinds of little modifications in your lifestyle to accommodate the fatigue and the little tremor in your hand. I lost the ability to write so I had to go and see a physical therapist. You don't know how, what part of your body will be affected. You don't know how severe it will be. You don't know um, if you'll recover completely from it. I just gave up hope almost. I was very depressed because I was an honor student, but I thought why should I continue on working so hard with my studies, especially since I haven't missed, like what quality of life would I have? Scared to death, spent the first year kind of well, wow, I got MS, what am I going to do? And kind of really decided that, you know what, I can either be sorry for myself and wake up tomorrow with MS or just basically go on with life. I've had to re-examine um, my goals and my hopes. After you get over the initial shock, you have to go somewhere to get the information. And that's where the MS Society has been such a gift. One of the first phone calls I made after we moved was to the Eastern North Carolina chapter. The society has become a, a really big part of my life. I realized that the society was probably filled with the only people who could really truly understand what I was going through. They helped me secure hand controls for my automobile. It gives me so much comfort to know that I can pick up the phone and that I have names of people that I can call and say, you know what, I need help. MS has been a blessing to me because I have a different outlook on life. I see people getting caught up in the day-to-day. -day. MS has really taught me to relax. My immediate goal is to walk my daughter, Shelly, down the aisle this fall at her wedding. I have two remarkable kids who have never known me any other way. They don't remember me without a cane or a walker. Um, and they are 
the reason why I want to keep moving, why I want to be as mobile as I can, so that I can participate fully in their lives. I feel like I have a timeline. I feel like I may not always have the activity of my limbs, and I'm very blessed with that right now. But I also feel like it's my mission to help people realize that they need to appreciate their lives. The question is not, why me? It's, why not me? Um, it could be any of us. If you could spend one night in my jeans, you would know just how much your support means to my future. If you could spend one night in my jeans, you would know how rewarding it is to join the movement. What a difference you can make in the lives of people like me. How much this disease has affected my life. If you could spend one night in my jeans, you would know how important it is to support local programs and services. If you could spend a night in my jeans, you know how crucial your support is to bring about a world free of MS. On this one night, you are making a difference in the lives of millions. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your role in achieving a world free of MS.